Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome to Karis Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We're so excited that you've decided to join us this evening, and we have an amazing message and word just for you. Well, I want to let you know that Karis Live Bible Study is just that. We're live, so we want to interact with you. So what we ask is that during this teaching, as you hear the word and you start to have questions, clarifying questions about what's being taught about the word of God, then I want to encourage you, send us your questions. Whatever platform you're watching, on, there should be a section at the bottom where you can type in your questions, send those to us because we want to take some time at the end of today's message to get to your questions. I also want to let you know Kara's daily live Bible study is daily. So you can join us every Monday and Friday at 10 a.m. You can join us Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. And then you can also join us Wednesdays at 7 a.m. And that is Mountain Standard Time. Also, I'd like to let you know if you would like to donate, become a partner, or even call us for prayer ministry, you can donate or partner at awmi.net slash give, or you can also do it over the phone and call for prayer at 719-635-1111. We have prayer ministers standing by 24 seven, so they're ready to pray with you. And then lastly, I wanna let you know that we have over 200,000 hours of free teaching material on our website, awmi.net. So take some time to go check that information out. You can also check out our new TV at gospeltruth.tv uh, where we have 24 seven uh, TV programs going on. Uh, we've got Andrew and other friends of his on there. I'm excited to jump into the word with you today. And so I want to introduce to you our senior instructor at Karis Bible College, Barry Bennett. And so Barry, thank you for being with us Hi, today. Tamara. So excited for Great you to, to bring the word. again. <laughs> I was here a couple hours ago. Amen. <laughs> so it's good to be here, and it's always a, an honor to share the Word of God, and I'm excited about it. We're having a, a great Bible conference. We got kicked off today to a good start, Amen. and it continues tonight and then uh, through Friday. So uh, get involved in watching as many of those messages as you can, and I, I know you'll be blessed. And so I want to share with you tonight a message called Strong in Faith, mm -hmm. and faith is something that I'm always studying and always meditating on. and. Uh, wanting to grow in my faith. And so I want to start with a, a passage, well-known passage from Romans 4, and we're going to read 19 through 21, Romans 4, 19 through 21. And I don't know if I'll be, I'll try to read through the whole thing without stopping and commenting, and then, then we'll go back and comment. Okay, Romans 4, 19 says, and not, and not being weak in faith, he did not, Abraham did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. All right, so now I want to, to look at some key passages here, and the things that stick out to me as I read through this. And it begins by saying, and not being weak mm -hmm. in faith, and that strikes me as if it's, if this is being pointed out as Abraham, the father of our faith, and it says he was not weak in faith, it means he could have been weak in faith, which is where I'm getting my title from, strong in faith. If you can be strong in faith, you can be weak in faith. Mm -hmm. And Abraham was not weak in faith. And so he's being put forth as an example for us as believers, how can we get strong in faith? I know all of us uh, want to be strong in faith. Many of us think we're strong in faith. And then when a challenge comes, we find out maybe we're not as strong as we thought we were. Uh, and so it's, it would be good to consider what's being said here. And so he says, and not being weak in faith, not being weak in faith. And so we're, we're being challenged here. He goes on to say, <clears throat> he did not consider his own body. Well, in this case, it was about he and his wife, Sarah, having a child at the age of 100 and the age of 90, uh, she was 90. And so there was, it was the impossibility of having a child. She couldn't even have a child when she was 18 or 20 or 25. And so she's gone her whole life barren. And God gives them a word that they were, they were going to have a child and he was going to fulfill his promise through the child that they would have together. Mm 
Mm -hmm. We won't go into all the, the side stories here right now. But he had every reason to be weak in faith or every reason to consider the circumstances. God, are you out of your mind, so to speak? Look at me, look at her. We can't do this, we can't pull this off. And that would be considering, it says he did not consider his own body. Mm -hmm. He could have considered, let's put this into our, our way of thinking, circumstances, when something comes against you, when a doctor tells you to get your affairs in order, as mm -hmm. that's what said to me, uh, are you going to consider that or are you going to consider the Word of God? Do you have any Word of God in you to consider? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a, an important thing. When negative news comes to you, it can be news about a family member, news about the economy, news about the news uh, on TV. When things come to you, what we choose to do at that point, when we hear a negative word of some kind, we either choose to consider it or we choose to not consider it by considering the Word of God. Hope that made sense. Mm. Many people, the minute they hear bad news, they choose to consider it, they begin to meditate on it, they begin to ponder the ramifications. Mm. What could this mean? What might this mean? Oh my, I might die or we might lose the house or this or that. And they consider it and they apply the principles of faith in reverse to the fear of whatever is, has been announced to them. And this says Abraham was not weak in faith. He did not consider the circumstances. He didn't consider the obvious, this is, there's no way we can pull this off and have a baby, but we can, we can transfer this into our own lives. Not, it says he was not weak in faith. We can be not weak in faith by not giving place to the negative news. When negative news comes, we have a choice to make. And I know I talk about choices a lot, but I, I, I mean, this is where it's at. We either choose to think about what we just heard and give it place, or we choose to not be weak in faith and not consider it. That's the huge choice that we're all dealing with. So let me, let me read on here. It says, he did not consider the circumstances. We'll make it more uh, um, apt for us here. He did not consider the circumstances. Uh, in the deadness of Sarah's womb. Number tw verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So here's another set of choices. We can either choose to believe the promise of God, or we can choose to disregard the promise of God and enter into unbelief. Unbelief is a choice. Everybody watching me right now believes something about everything. You have some kind of opinion about everything. And where did that opinion come from? You heard something that you chose to believe or to not believe. Mm. All of us are a bag of op opinions, of beliefs and unbeliefs, if you will, about certain things in life. And so we have to decide, are we going to choose to believe? This says, again, he did not waver at the promise of God, or he didn't get this word from God that you're going to have a child and say, well, that's uh, no way. He it says, grew strong in faith, or was not weak in faith. Excuse me, he was not weak in faith. He did not consider the circumstances that seemed to be screaming no way in the face of the promise. He didn't waver at the promise. So many Christians read their Bibles and they read the promises of God and they just, they just brush it away as if it were a fairy tale. They are choosing to not believe the word of God. I've done this, we've all done this, I, I assume. Uh, many times you read a promise and you just read it and isn't that nice? And I know that that's what God wants, but you know, we live in the real world and we have all these real issues. And so, you know, whatever. And we brush off the promise of God and we just simply choose to not believe it. Mm -hmm. This is so powerful. This is so important. In part of renewing your mind and renewing your spirit to have strong faith, you've got to choose mm -hmm. to believe the promise of God, believe the word of God or you're choosing unbelief. Mm -hmm. You're choosing one or the other. And this is where a lot of people are very strong in unbelief yeah. and others are strong in faith. All right, so he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Therefore, let me, let, me, let me comment on this. He it was not weak in faith, he was strengthened in faith. Your faith can get stronger. Your faith can grow strong. 
And it was growing strong to the place where he was giving glory to God because he wasn't doubting the promise of God. He chose to believe the promise of God. And based on a promise that looked absolutely impossible, he chose to praise God. Mm. He chose to give thanks for something that looked in the natural impossible. I've been there when I'm told to get my affairs in order. I just, I, I have a quickening word from God. No, I'm going to live and not die. Okay, it wasn't an easy process, but here I am. It was a process of growing strong in faith, not looking at the, all the ramifications, not looking at all the this could happen, that could happen. Not, I chose to not look at that. To this day, I have not looked up everything that was wrong with me. I don't want to know. I don't care because I'm healed. But I chose to grow strong in my faith. It says he grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced. I did a Bible study a couple of weeks ago called Fully Persuaded, which you can go look up. Being fully convinced that what he had promised, mm. he was also able to perform. This is where all of us, the place we all need to come to if we're going to grow strong in faith. Are you fully convinced? Are you fully persuaded that the promises of God, God will accomplish? Or is it, and eh, maybe he will, maybe he won't, if it be thy will. Well, it is his will. If he made the promise, it's his will. But so many of us are, are fluctuating. We're double-minded, double-hearted. We're considering things that are making us grow strong in unbelief rather than mm. considering the promise that it's a done deal. God is faithful to his word. Amen. Many times we see faith as a one-time static event. Yes, I, I believed I got born again. I walked up the aisle. I did whatever. I have faith. Well, when you got born again, yes, you got a measure of faith or the measure of faith, depending on what version you read. Romans 12, 3. We all got faith. We got the faith of God when we got born again. But what happens to it after that? It's like women have a baby, but then what? Do you just put it in the corner? Uh, no, you have to feed the baby. You have to care for the baby. You have to raise the baby. Into a, into a mature adult. Amen. Praise God. It's the same thing with faith. We all got faith when we got born again, but it's not a one-time event. Faith is an ongoing, living, dynamic, organic. It's a lifestyle. Let me read you some, some examples of faith that we find from Jesus and Paul and others in the New Testament. I'm not going to look these up with you, but in Matthew, you can jot them down. Matthew 6.30, Jesus speaks of little faith. In Matthew 8, 5 through 10, he speaks of great faith. Mm -hmm. Actually uses the word mega faith. In Matthew 14, 31, he again speaks of little faith. Usually when he's talking about little faith, he's talking to the disciples who are walking <laughs> and talking with him. In Acts 6, 5, it mentions being full of faith. I think this is about Stephen being full of faith. Mm -hmm. In uh, 1 Timothy 1, 19, shipwrecked faith. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Some that had started in faith and then got off and they got shipwrecked in their faith. Mm. James 2.5 talks about being rich in faith. Man, if you want to be rich, there's a good place to be rich Amen. in your faith. Man, if you are rich in faith, that's the currency of heaven. You will, you will be able to do exploits if, when you're rich in faith. James 2.22 talks about faith being made perfect. So faith can be imperfect. If it can be made perfect, it can be imperfect. It can be less than what it could be. And I don't want my faith to be less than what it could be. I want it to be perfect. James 2.26 speaks of dead faith. Faith without works is dead. dead. Mm -hmm. There are some, some folks like that. They think they have faith, but they really don't. Let me, let me men mention this. There's a difference between, be, uh, between a belief system and faith. A belief system is not always faith. Many times a belief system is the doctrinal structure that you have, that you've been taught, that you adhere to, that you believe in, in a sense, but it's not necessarily a living dynamic faith that you can grab onto when, when a challenge comes. It's a belief system. It's a way you live your life. And many people confuse what they believe in this sense, and I'm using English, not Greek right now. Uh, they confuse what they believe with true faith. Mm. true faith that, that's coming from the Father. We'll talk about where it comes from here in just a minute. All right. So we have uh, dead faith in 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4 talks about faith that overcomes the world. Amen. 
oh, hallelujah, faith that overcomes the world or whatever the world throws at you, whatever life throws at you, you can be in a place of this perfect faith, this strengthened faith, this strong faith to where you can navigate through those situations. Praise God. Amen. Then I'll do one more for uh, 2 Thessalonians 1.3. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says, speaks of exceedingly growing faith. Mm. Faith can grow. Amen. Faith should grow. Let me say this to, to you and to me, that whatever you feed in your life will grow. If you're feeding your flesh, okay, we'll talk about I mean, just natural diet is one thing, mm -hmm. but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your, your flesh, your carnal desires. If you're feeding that, if you're feeding your fears with the, with the news, if you're feeding carnal desires with, with Hollywood garbage, if you're feeding yourself on bitterness, if you're meditating on unforgiveness in that person, what they did to me, and you're feeding, you're feeding on these things, they are going to grow because what you, what you feed on is going to, to grow in your life. Mm -hmm. When, we, when it talks about exceedingly growing faith, it's the capacity for what God put in you when you got born again to grow and to overcome the world. But it has to be fed, just like a baby has to be fed. Just because the baby is complete, the baby is, has every organ, the baby has all of its muscles, the baby has everything. But it's not a full mature, fully grown adult. Uh, a baby can't play NFL football. It's, the muscles are there, but they're not developed. It's going to take a while to develop those muscles. It's the same in the walk of faith, that many times we're, we're trying to believe for things that, that are doctrinal or they're informational, but they're not alive within us. Mm. And so we're not in a place of strong faith. And when something comes along, and I get so many people say, I know I have faith. I know I have all the faith in the world. I thought I had faith for some things. And then when the things don't come forth as you thought they should, mm -hmm. you've got to be honest. Yeah. Rather than blaming God, okay, maybe I'm not in the place of faith that I thought I was. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Where does faith come from? Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. Paul says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or it's a special kind of hearing. Faith will come. Faith comes. Now, we know we have the faith of God. I get that. But it, it, we'll say it's activated. It comes alive would be a good way to put it. Faith comes alive by hearing not just anything, but by the rhema word of God or by the living word of God. In the Greek is what this says. In other words, this is implying that there is a hearing going on, not just natural hearing, though it can, it can happen through natural hearing, but it has to be a spiritual hearing hearing. And that can happen naturally when you're, you're hearing me right now. Uh, faith can be born in your heart as I'm speaking. Praise God. But just because you hear a teaching doesn't mean it always activated your faith. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a spiritual hearing taking place. Faith comes. So if faith comes, faith can go mm -hmm. when you start hearing something else. Mm -hmm. All right. You can hear all the promises of God about healing. You can hear the promises of God about your abundant life. You can hear all kinds of things that God wants to do to bless your life. And then if you go home and turn on the TV and you start hearing about all the medicines that are out there and hearing about all the economic woes and hearing about all the violence, now you're feeding on something else. Mm. And anything that was gained may, may start getting lost. Remember the, the guys that were shipwrecked in their faith. How did that happen? They got distracted. Yeah. They got distracted from where faith comes from or what makes faith come alive. And when we, when we choose to get distracted, which is another choice, mm -hmm. we choose to give ourselves over to other things, we're going to be starving yeah. our faith muscle, mm -hmm. if we want to call it a muscle here. <laughs> Abraham grew strong in faith. Amen. He was not weak in faith, considering things that he shouldn't be considering. Mm -hmm. He grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Oh, this is so important. And I, I sadly see many, and many write me and, and all, and, and I don't mind people writing me, you know, with needing uh, questions answered, that's fine. But so often it's, I, I, knew, I know I have faith, why isn't this happening? Well, it's not happening because you're not in faith. And then they get off offended, <laughs> okay? Uh, let's stop getting offended, and let's, get, let's cut to the chase and be real about this. Mm. If I'm not getting the results God has promised me, then the problem isn't with God. The problem is in my heart. 
And I need to be honest enough to say, okay, there's something amiss in my own walk with God. I need to go back to the source. What's the source? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. Hearing is a, a special hearing. Hearing comes by the spirit. My words are spirit and they are life, Jesus said. And if we're just going through the routine of being a Christian, mm. which we can do, and you just seem to have all your ducks in a row and everything's going fine and you're just going through the motions of being a good Christian, which you can do, that's fine until there's a challenge mm -hmm. that challenges that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, well, but this is my belief system. I don't believe in this. I told one of the, one of the chaplains that came into my hospital room, she said, How's your, how are you doing? And I said, not good. She said, why not? And I said, I'm not supposed to be here. I was pretty cranky. She says, what do you mean? I said, I don't believe in being sick. I don't believe in sickness. I'm not supposed to be sick. That was my belief system. And yet there I was dying of cancer. Uh, it was, there was a disconnect between my belief system and a living act of faith. That's why I'm so mm. adamant about this right now, is that I just see too many people suffering because they have a belief system that they're mistaking for their faith. Wow. John 5.19. I'm going to read John 5.19 to you. Jesus, it says in John 5, 19, and Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for whatever he does, the son does also in like manner. Listen to what Jesus just said. He said, the son, him, he can do nothing of himself, or he's not just making it up as he goes. He can only do what he's getting from the father. In another place, he says, I can only speak what I hear my father speaking. Here he says, I can only do what I see my father doing. It's the same thing. In other words, Jesus was absolutely dependent on his fellowship, his relationship with the father in order to do anything. He says, of myself, I can do nothing. This was Jesus. He wasn't operating as God. He was operating as a man, son of man anointed with the same Holy Spirit that we have, and he was limited to his fellowship with the Father to do the miracles that he did and the healings and all of the things he did. He had to be receiving it on a daily basis. That's why he would go off and pray all night. He wasn't just fulfilling some ritual. He mm. had to receive from the Father mm. because that's what quickened him in faith. That's what made his faith come alive mm. for the following day's ministry. I don't think we can improve upon the way Jesus lived. Amen. I don't think we can offer less of our time and fellowship and expect more results. Yeah. And I know people quote, well, and greater things than these we shall do because he goes to the Father, but I don't see too many people doing greater things mm. because we're not with the Father enough. And so the fellowship is, the, is where the hearing takes place. Now, someone that's not a believer or a brand new believer, they can... Faith can come as a gift of faith, we could say at the time, or a spontaneous, like the man at Lystra in Acts 14, uh, was lame from his mother's womb, just sitting there, and he heard Paul preach the gospel, and faith came alive in him. I mean, that can happen. I'm not talking about those kinds of cases where an unbeliever hears the word for the first time and gets healed. That's, praise God for that. But I'm talking about believers that are now in a fellowship, a relationship with God, and are expected to walk with God, where is their faith going to come from? Mm -hmm. It's going to come from the, their direct fellowship from through the word, hearing it with the spirit man, not just with the head, but with the spirit. When we hear it, then we declare it. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, I believe, therefore I speak. Mm -hmm. I believe, you, you will speak what you believe. And listen to yourself sometime and find out how you're doing. What are you talking about? Uh, if you're talking about, oh, I just don't know if we can afford gas this week. I just don't know if we can afford this. I just don't know. I just, I'm, up, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. That just really scares me. Oh, who's going to get elected? I just don't know what we're going to do. All of those words are coming from a heart filled with unbelief. Mm. It's not a heart filled with strong faith. It's a heart filled with unbelief because you're not, you're considering all the news and you're not considering the word of God. Mm. God. Abraham was not weak in faith. He did not consider the news. Amen. If we want to move it forward to our time. 
He did not consider the negative reports. He did not consider the economy. He did not consider any of this. Amen. He grew strong in faith. You can grow strong in faith. I'm growing stronger in faith. Praise Amen. God. That's my declaration. Because I'm spending more time with the author and finisher of my faith. Amen. Praise God. The more time we spend with the Father, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make time for what's important to you. And this may be hard for some to hear. I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to help people. Amen. You are going to make time for that which is important. And if spending time with God is not important to you, then when the doctor says, get your affairs in order, you're probably going to freak out. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be calling everybody, please pray for me. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? Please pray for me. Why? Why is that your reaction? Because you have considered all of the negative things for so long mm -hmm. that there's no foundation in your heart to resist the negative news. I had a doctor tell me once, showed me a sonogram of my firstborn in the womb. There had been complications. And he told me the fetus is dead. He used the word fetus. The fetus is dead. It's, the sac has collapsed. There's no sign of life. It's dead. It's going to pass spontaneously. The word of God came alive in me. Faith comes by hearing. And what came out of my heart and my mouth was no. I did another Bible study some months ago on the power of no. Amen. Uh, sometimes no is the most powerful thing you can say. And I said no to that yes. news. Amen. No. And my son is now 43 years old, uh, incredibly successful and blessed, because I said no. Mm -hmm. In other words, I didn't consider the negative news. I considered the promises of God. We need to, to come to a place where we are only considering what the Word of God says. That's going to require time in fellowship with him. You will make time for what's important to you. And I think we're probably entering into some days where we need to have our priorities in order. And we need, there is a faith that overcomes the world. We, we mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. A faith that overcomes the world. You don't have to be mm -mm. Uh, tossed to and fro like everybody else. Amen. But the faith has got to be developed. It's got to grow, exceedingly growing faith. Mm -hmm. We mentioned a few minutes ago. In Matthew 4.4, 4, Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, how often do we eat bread or how often do we eat? He's saying you can't just live by natural food. How often do you eat natural food? Mm. And most of us would say three times a day. In other words, it's a daily event to eat. He says that daily event isn't going to sustain you. Man must live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's a daily event. That's right. And so we, and I would say that we need to be expecting to have the things of God quickened to us, made alive to us on a daily basis if we're going to grow strong in faith. Amen. And that's, to me, that's the only way that you're going to be prepared if, if a negative report comes, something happens. Uh, too many Christians fall apart just like everybody else and just start moaning and groaning and screaming and running and whatever mm -hmm. because they are not strengthening their faith. They're not feeding on the right thing. Amen. Let me do a couple more here. I know we're into our question time, but this, I'm not quite done. Romans 10.10. Romans 10, 10, Paul says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is the word, uh, it's two different words are used in this, in two verses here one sozo and one soteria, but they both mean the same thing. The complete salvation, spirit, soul, and body of man. He says, for with the heart, one believes, where does your faith come from? It does not come from your head. That's right. Faith is not mental. Now, it's good to have your mind renewed and your mind in, in order with these things. Amen. I'm not putting that down at all. But that's not where your faith comes from. Your faith comes from your heart. Your heart has to believe. Your heart believes something. It's not like you can't do this. You're believing something anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can do it. You are doing it. You're believing something about everything. You have an opinion. It's gotten into your heart somehow. Well, God wants a chance. 
He wants to get his word into your heart because that's the only place that you can believe to have faith to, have, to overcome the world. It has to come from your heart. It has to be sown in there daily. You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's right. And you may say, well, I read my Bible. I don't ever hear anything. And I understand that, but keep going. Because the more time you give to this, the more sensitive your spirit becomes to the things of God. And it might take a month. It might take two months. It might take some time. Who knows? I don't know your particular case. But give time to God's word so that the, your heart will become sensitive to when the spirit quickens you. Faith comes alive and you know what to say and you know what to do and mm. you won't fall apart in fear. Amen. You will have the answer. That's right. Praise God. Your the faith is of your heart. Let me let me do one more. Proverbs four twenty through twenty two. Proverbs four twenty through twenty two. Solomon says, "My son, give attention to my words." Mm -hmm. So God is speaking through Solomon to us right now. This is a living word for right now. Mm -hmm. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Amen. Keep them in the midst of your heart. There's where the faith comes from. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Mm. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Mm. Big subject right there, big passage. But it said, give attention, incline, lean forward. You're going to lean toward that which interests you. You're going to incline yourself. You're going to pay attention. You pay attention to conversations that interest you. How many of you have been in a room full of conversations and they, you're not paying attention to any of them, but then you hear somebody say something yeah. and you gravitate toward that because you're, you, you heard something that interests you, you give, you're going to give attention. Amen. Then he says, keep it, in the, keep it before your eyes, the Word of God. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Mm. For out of your heart flow the issues of life. That's right. Out of your heart flows the declaration of faith. Mm. Out of your heart flows your authority in Christ. Out of your heart flows faith. Mm. Faith comes by hearing with the heart man believes unto. And it says, goes on to say righteousness in, in Romans 10, but it can be unto healing. It can be unto the abundant life, restoration of a, of a marriage, mm. whatever. It can be anything that's challenged you. Amen. Faith will come from your heart if your heart is feeding on the living Word of God, if you're yeah. giving attention to it. Oh, I hope this is blessing you. It's yeah. blessing me. I, I love to teach on this because I get stirred up, if you didn't notice. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop there, and let's uh, see if we have any questions. Oh, absolutely. Um, we have some amazing questions. And real quick, I just want to recap for you, our, our live viewing audience. Man, Barry, what a great teaching on being strong in faith. You said a couple of things I just want to share just to kind of pick out for you as an audience to be able to hear again. But Barry brought out, and he said, we either choose to be weak in faith and consider what we just heard, or we choose to be strong in faith by considering the word. Amen. Oh, that was so good. I love this too. He said, faith is an ongoing living lifestyle. And then I love here down, I've got two more things I want to share with you. And he said, faith comes from direct fellowship with the word of God. And lastly, I love this as he said, it is a daily event to have the word of God made alive to you. Amen. Amen. Man, it's so powerful. So we're excited to jump in on some of your questions. I know I was blessed by this teaching. I know you were because you've sent in really great questions. So if you're ready, Barry, our first question. I think I'm ready. I think you're ready. You're going to do great. Right. Um, but our first, our first question comes from a Ruthie on chat. And so she asks, we know we can hear his voice because we're his sheep and that faith comes by hearing. Her question says, how do you encourage and strengthen yourself after you've misheard what you thought God has said? Well, I don't, I, you know, we've all done that. And I don't get down on myself. I, as I've said in other Bible studies, I don't do guilt. Mm -hmm. I do mercy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I move back into the things of God. So uh, I go back to the word. I keep, mm -hmm. I said, Father, reveal these things to me. Paul prayed for the Ephesians and he prayed for the Colossians too. There's two prayers, several prayers. Uh, one in Ephesians 1, 17 and on, I think. Ephesians 3, 14 and on, Colossians 1, 9 and 10. These are prayers that Paul prayed. And he's praying for the believers to have spiritual understanding. Amen. And so if he's praying that, it means that this, it's not automatic. We don't all just have spiritual understanding and wisdom at the, mm -hmm. you know, when we get born again. And so I just keep feeding on the Word. I keep reading other books. I listen to other teachers, where, what they may have that I don't have. Uh, I just stay alive 
in my spirit to, there's more in this and I want the more, so I'm going to keep going after it. Amen. I don't get discouraged. I just, I know there's more, so I keep going for it. Amen. I know that. There's more. Amen. So our next question comes from a guest on chat and it says, can faith be used on anything that you're desiring or does faith have to only be used on that which the Lord has spoken to you? Well, the Lord has spoken a lot to us about abundant life. Mm -hmm. He has promised peace. He has promised joy. He has promised forgiveness. He's promised uh, abundance in every sense of the word, uh, prosperity in, in spirit, soul, and body. There are different things that the Lord has promised uh, and we should be walking in the expectation of that abundance, of that provision, of that grace in every area of our lives. And so I don't know what you could believe for outside of that that would interest you. Uh, anything that deals with a healed relationship, anything that deals with a healthy body, anything that deals with opportunity and favor and promotion, anything that deals with being a blessing to people, having more to give, uh, whatever your needs might be, to have what you need, a home and, and an automobile or two, whatever. Uh, all of those things are legitimate mm -hmm. as, they, as they are responses to the heart of God for us. Uh, and so we can have faith for all of that. Now, we, outside of that, I don't know what would be out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I'm not real sure how to, to go on with that answer, but yeah. I think there's enough to believe for in what God has promised. Amen, that's powerful. So our next question comes from Melissa on YouTube. And Melissa says, I struggle with the idea of faith being something that we have to work for. I feel like it's taking things off of Jesus and being effortless into being something we strive for. Could you speak to this? Um, it's not something we strive for. It's mm -hmm. something that we receive from fellowship, from relationship. Amen. In other words, to suggest that you can have faith without fellowship and relationship is error. You can't. It's, so I don't know what you mean by effortless, but I'm not putting in effort in my own strength. I'm, I'm excited about the things of God in His strength. And I, I spend time with God because I love to. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the Word because I want to be. And I'm in in uh, listening to other teachings because I want to. In other words, this is not effort for me at all. This is, this is fun. This is life. Uh, so I'm not working up something. I'm learning to hear him and to receive from him. And as a result of that, I'm growing strong in faith. So it's, it's not a work. It's responding to the love of God in everything in your life, uh, spending time with the one that loves you. Amen. That's beautiful. And spending time with the one who loves you. So my next question for you, um, this one comes from uh, Bozo on YouTube. And he asked the question, how do we bring our dead faith to the practical sense of a living active faith? Well, that's what we've been talking about is, again, I mean, I, I sound like a broken record, but uh, there is no other way than being with the Lord and being in his word. Amen. Uh, and having these things quicken to you. Now, if you feel like you're a novice in the Word, you may get some books by Andrew or others. I have a few good books. Uh, Greg Moore and other teachers are many great faith-building books to where you can get some orientation that you may be lacking. I, I've, read, I've read hundreds of books in my Christian life uh, to get some orientation. Some of them today I look back and think, well, that wasn't really that good of a book. But at the time, it gave me something. It may have been one brick in the wall that I got out of it. Uh, so I would just say, expose yourself to good teaching, get as much as you can. If, you, if you're lacking any biblical orientation, come to Karis Bible College, we'll help you. Amen. Uh, <laughs> and so you'll get blessed here. Amen. Amen. No, that's really good. Um, so our next question actually comes from Unika on YouTube. And you shared, so I'm going to actually preface what her question is. You had shared, um, I actually wrote this down, um, if I can read my own handwriting. Um, so you'd wrote about the difference between confusing many times our belief system with having active faith. And so uh, Unika's question comes, says, is a belief system something that's more mental or intellectual? What's the difference between your belief system and an active faith? And how do you move from belief system into active faith? Yes, it is. It is. The, the intellectual part is what you, what you believe based upon mm -hmm. what you've been taught either through the word directly or through teachers, your pastor, what have you. So you have a belief system, you have doctrines about righteousness by faith, about uh, the blood of Jesus, about baptism, about many, many, many things. We have all of these things hopefully in place in our intellect. Mm. Uh, and that doesn't mean that that can't be a living faith, but many times it's only intellectual uh, and it's not a, a real thing. And so it's not that you do away with one and replace it with the other, you have both. 
we need good doctrine. I teach a course called Sound Doctrine. Mm, <laughs> amen. Uh, and so we need good doctrine. But is, as long as it's only in the mind, it's not going to help you overcome in life. You've got to have that living relationship with the Father through His Word for that to be a living thing for you. That's where the real faith is. Belief system will get you through some things. You'll have the wisdom to make a lot of decisions from your belief system. But it's the challenges of life where you are going to need an act of faith to not consider the challenge, but to consider the promise. Uh, that's a choice, and that, that's something that we can all do. Amen. No, thank you so much. I think that was such a powerful time of teaching, and I know we're just about out of time. Um, so I know we have more questions, and we'll bring those in to next week on the Tuesday Roundup and get a chance to answer more of your questions. Uh, but in closing, Barry, would you like to say a prayer over our viewing audience before we close? Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time in your word, and I pray that the word has found fertile hearts, Amen. hearts that are open to be challenged, hearts that are open to become more hungry uh, for this relationship that I've been speaking of. Mm -hmm. Father, that we would value your living word above everything else in life, that we would then grow strong in faith mm -hmm. so that when the challenges of life come, we are prepared, we have an overcoming faith Mm -hmm. We will win. And I just speak a blessing over everyone watching right now that are dealing with various problems in life. Mm -hmm. There is grace for you right now. Don't be discouraged. There is mercy. There is grace. You can be delivered right now from whatever you're going through. Just believe the word of God and receive his blessing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. I do want to encourage you, if you have a chance, go back and listen to this teaching again. I know many of you asked some of the questions about how do I grow my faith? What does it look like to have rich faith? All of that was really shared in this teaching that Barry gave. So I encourage you, go back, listen to it again. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Have a blessed week. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 